Hey everybody, Michigan here. Welcome back to the channel. And welcome to a tank that you didn't know you needed in your garage until now. This is the UE57, or full name is Renault UE57. And I believe this is the smallest tank in the game. What it lacks in size, it makes up for in firepower, camo, and DPM. This tank is insane, and in the next three battles, I'm going to show you what this tank is capable of. Now it costs about 40,000 credits if you want to fully equip it. It's going to run you about 200 grand maybe, but definitely worth the price for the amount of fun you're going to get out of this vehicle. So while we're getting into position here, let's talk about some of the UE stats. Now I'm not going to go into depth with numbers, but I'll tell you this tank has incredible camo. Just look at the size of it. It will pretty much be dwarfed by a lot of trees and bushes. Now that also means that you can't run over said trees and bushes because they will slow you down pretty much to a halt and some trees you actually won't be able to knock over. What it does have though is a 75 mil or a six pounder cannon that you can see that with its standard rounds, it has 110 millimeters of penetration with 75 HP. Now you say, well, you know, that's fairly average. However, it has a two and a half second reload, giving it a damage per minute of over 1700 and that means you can absolutely shred enemy vehicles especially when you keep them in front of you now it has no armor i believe it has eight millimeters of frontal armor i think it's even maybe six at the sides so you've got as much armor as about a kitchen sheet pan so while that might stop forks and knives it's not going to stop any sort of tank round and god forbid people start shooting he at you forget it, you're pretty much done. With 265 hit points, you're not going to last very long. But, since you're so small, you're a difficult target to hit and even more difficult to spot. So we're going to take this UE57 up onto this ridge and we're going to demonstrate just the raw damage per minute and potential of this gun once you get it going. Now, I'm headed up into the corner, common TD spot. I've noticed that the enemy tanks are pushing hard up this 9 line. It is a low tier game, it's a tier 3 game. But actually, it's tier 4, so on bottom tier, you can see me there trying to knock that tree over. I actually don't even think I knock it over, and now I'm going to get myself double pushed. One thing to note here is that the tank doesn't have great left and right traverse. And you can also see the shell speed isn't fantastic. It's less than 1,000 meters per second, as well actually less than 200, or sorry, less than 900. 892. Now, the premium rounds are a little bit better with... Uh, 1115 and they have 180 pen meaning that pretty much any tank you're going to face you're going to go straight through it now you can also take a look at the accuracy my accuracy is 0.35 so it's not great but you have plenty of ammunition to fire as much as you want now with 75 damage with 25 percent either direction means you're gonna be rolling for you know about 130 to maybe 65 most of the time you're not really sorry not 130 about 60 to 100 damage and you can see the accuracy. They're just not really doing me any favors against this T6. So I'm going to swap to this MTLS, which has kindly given himself to me. And you're going to see the traverse speed of this gun. Unfortunately, I have to keep turning my vehicle, but thanks to this T127, we're able to keep him lit. Unfortunately, I'm going to continuously miss shots this there. I'm going to move forward so I can identify him myself. And now I'm going to start unloading into this vehicle. This short to medium range is the best because you don't have to worry about this uh, slow shell speed. Now, the bushes are really screwing me up. They're giving me quite a headache, and I'm going to move back through. Now, another strong suit of this vehicle is the view range. With Binox and a good crew, you can get up to about, I think I have mine at 399 meters view range. Putting a good shot in there, getting the tracks. That was my first kill against that MTLS, and I'm going to get one against that M3 Stuart. Now, here comes the Panzer 2G. Gonna miss that shot again. This isn't the easiest gun to work with. You really want to keep your enemies moving forward and away from you. Not left to right. I'm just not leaving these tanks enough, but I am going to finish off the Panzer 2G for kill number 3. Now, a T6 medium. A fairly heavily armored vehicle, but with 75 pen, we're gonna go right through him like butter for kill number 4. This M3 Stewart is going to be kill number 5, and now we're moving on to the M8A1. Our team is capping out. I'm gonna auto-aim on him. Just get fully aimed in. And there we go for kill number six. There's a top gun, and the cap expires. And I finish with 962 and 95 damage. However, I believe we got a blind shot in there. So let's take a look at the post game. 
All right, so we finished with a first class mastery badge. Bruiser, fire for effect, a top gun for our six kills. 962 damage, so it looks like that blind shot didn't actually hit. But we finished second on our team, top on damage. Detailed report, it's a tier three. We're not going to make a whole, much, a whole bunch. 12,000 credits. I didn't fire any gold. And with our times two, that is 1,600 base. Let's take a look at the next replay. All right, welcome back to replay number two. This time we're swapping it up, and we are moving away from the bushes, and we're heading on to ends, a very tight map, where it's extremely difficult for TDs to stay safe, I guess. So you can see me starting to shoot through things. Just look how much that slowed me down, even that little fence post. So you're going to see me use some of the standard ammunition to punch through some of these fences so that I don't have to drive through them with my tank. Now, with the 57 horsepower to ton that this vehicle has, I was seeing if I could shoot through multiple fences there. Clearly not. With the 57 horsepower, it doesn't give you a great power to weight ratio. So you're going to be slow to get up to speed. I believe I actually put a turbo on this vehicle to try and help that out. Now I am going to get some bushing or bush spots early on, some camouflaged areas. So we're going to sit up here. Now I've noted that this MKA is going pretty aggressive. I'm looking for shots there. I know I'm not going to be able to hit that T29. I'm going to activate my binox here. Now that's another thing. Every time you turn your hull, you lose your binox. So that's something to take into consideration here. Now I'm just going to auto aim and I'm just going to start to unload on this Panzer 3E. Now I prefer to auto aim on stationary vehicles with this tank. Just so I know I get center of mass shots, at least when they're not moving. So you can see, even though that Panzer 3E was behind cover, we just shot the cover down. And that's our first kill of the game. 374 damage in just a couple of seconds there, and taking out that tier 3, even I'd call it a medium German tank, even though I think it's classified as light. Now, Panzer 38H, a very well armored tier 2, which is frightening for even a lot of tier 3. Will it be a problem for this tier 3 French. I don't think so. We are just going to butcher that thing, shooting right through the fence, just like that, five seconds, and we take out the majority of that tier 2 super heavy German light tank. Kind of strange saying that. Now, here we have an M1441. Again, no problem. I'll just shoot through all the buildings. No problem at all. Now you can see I'm starting to get shots, and there's this cover gone. Three shots, five seconds, and we're going to start to unload into this tank. Going back to auto aim, one more, and unfortunately our team finishes him off. Here comes another one. Is there tank things he can hide behind? Maybe, but we'll just blow through him. The Sahario is looking for shots. We're just going to start to unload. One more. 219, and that kill was taken from us too by the Panzer II. So we could be at four kills, but we're not. But what we are at is 1,000 damage already. Just three minutes and 45 seconds into this battle and there's still four enemy tanks left to kill so let's see what we can do in some closer range scenarios as we move away from the wooded area and into the open so we're going to look through we're just going to unload into the fence and there's kill number three taking that m2 light and now we get lit again the sneakiness of this tank even works out in the open they have a couple of tanks left. The FCM-36 is even more heavily armored than the Panzer 38 that we faced earlier. And here is a Locust. Now, the Locust is going to look at me, but with 1700 DPM, I know I can trade against him. He's hiding behind the train car. We're going to put one into him. He's going to put another one, taking our engine out. And that kill is going to be taken by the Panzer as well. I'm going to fix my engine. We are 1300 damage. Let's speed this up. Since we have one more replay, and let's see what happens next. We're going, again, this is not the quickest tank. We're hitting at about 40, but that's about it. Now, with this FCM-36, I'm a little concerned about this MKA coming around, so I'm going to allow my Panzer II to come up, and I'm just going to sit up on this corner. Now, I'm constantly wary that this MKA might come around my side, but we're just going to speed it up and see if he does, and if I'm able to deal with it. Well, the FCM-36 is going to poke out going right through. Look at all the green there. When he angles, it's a little difficult, but I'm just going to fire one in there. He's going to put 61 damage into me, and we are going to absolutely slice through that FCM-36. Actually, that was a bot, but it still was a tier 3. Now we're going to put one into the MKA. That's going to bounce, so unfortunately, we could have had 
close to, I think, seven kills there, maybe even eight. But our team is going to help us out in finishing those vehicles. But we're going to finish with 1,544 damage there. No assist, pretty much, well, 43. Let's take a look at the post game. So here we're going to get a mastery badge for our whopping 1,544 damage. Bruiser, fighter for our four kills, fire for effect, and a high caliber this time. At least 20% of the total HP of enemy vehicles. We are going to finish top of our team on kills along with the Panzer II who helped us out on quite a bit of those. And maybe also helped himself to some of our kills. We are going to finish second on XP earned. I'm not sure why the Panzer II. Oh, because he's a tier lower so he gets a lot more XP. And we're going to actually lose credits on this one. Not sure there. Maybe I was I was running food it looks like. I must have run out of the French Frenchy food there. So we're going to lose 9,000 credits. But not too bad, finishing off with 1,000 XP. Let's move into the final replay. Welcome back once again. We're going to finish right where we started on Mannerheim Line. This time we have a Tier 4 game again. But we've spun on the opposite side, and I assure you that this game will be fairly different from the last one. Now I'm headed out down to the H line here, and I'm going to look to take this little position on this mound just over on this area and see what sniping I can do. This wasn't my ideal choice, however, it is the best for this tank on this map. I really don't want to go up the B line because it's easy to get overrun, and it seems like a lot of our team is going down here, so I think I made the right choice. Now, one problem that you're going to constantly discover, and you'll see a lot of in this match, is the struggle with the gun depression. This tank only has two degrees of gun depression, meaning that you constantly have to overexpose yourself or make sure that you're looking down on your opponents rather than having to peek over ridges. So I'm gonna take a look over here. I'm looking to see, maybe I can help with this Panzer 3E. Looking, looking, looking. This isn't really the best situation here for this tank. I'm gonna just speed through. I'm looking for a shot on that Valentine. Where is it? Not looking for, I'm now lit by the looks and I'm very aware that they have an FCM 36 pack 40. And that's not a tank that I wanna be dealing with, especially since he's gonna be sitting right where I'm trying to shoot. I'm gonna zoom in, aim time isn't great, gonna get one shot in on that Valentine. Fortunately, that one's gonna hit the wall and the last one's gonna go low and the Valentine's going to back up. So one of three tanks there. You really wanna have the majority of the tank to make sure that you're hitting those shots. Now I've noted there's a T6 medium coming over there our friend from the last game that we absolutely wrecked. And I believe these games were, the three games I've shown you were within a few games of each other. If not, maybe these were three out of five. So I'm going to work with this M3 Stewart to take out this very dangerous tier four American medium tank. Now you can see the gun depression problems there. I'm looking for it, I can't get my gun down, still can't get my gun down. There we go, way overboard. And luckily the camo on this tank is going to help me out. I'm lit, unfortunately. Because as we take this out, you can... Uh, I guess I'm not all the way through the bush, but I'm close enough that he can spot me. I wish I would be further back. Putting one in. One more on the tar... One more, and he's going to disappear. Looking for a shot now on this Sahario. Fortunately, rust my shot there, but I'm going to crack him. And now, look at these shells. Just going right back into the engine deck. That one just clipping the turret, and we're going to finish that vehicle off. Looking for this Panzer II. Not going to get it team is up by one tank, but they're down the hit points of another vehicle. Now we're going to have to try and snipe. We're going to look for this Valentine first. Unfortunately, should not be rushing my shot there. That one's going to go into the engine deck. Looking for the Valentine B. Not going to get it. Still not going to get it. Where is it? The shell speed isn't helping. I'm going to connect one with the Valentine. Not just, not quite enough. Really small target there to hit. And we are going to finish that vehicle off. Now going for the Panzer S35. Right, we're getting lucky here. Some of our shells are flying true. Just over the top right. But we have plenty of ammo. We are going to just keep firing. Now these tight shots on the move are really tough with, with that poor shell velocity. If this had 1100, 1200 meters a second, it would be a lot easier. But under 900 meters a second is incredibly difficult to deal with. Now our team's in an interesting situation. We have the enemy team pretty much pinned. However, we don't have a lot of hit points in either area. So what I'm going to do is try and take some pressure off by shooting into the middle. I'm going to utilize my Binox here and see what I can do against this enemy team, especially all of these tanks camping up north. So I immediately get lit. There's the Pack 30. Back up, back up, back up. 
and the small size of this vehicle means that we can actually get hidden behind this Sahario on our team, or this P2640 actually. So you can see I'm looking to back up to just shoot over the top. This Pac-30 is going down. Now I'm going to look lower, and we're going to see if we can't get any shots. Looking for him, he's going to expose himself. There's one. There's two. The Pac-40 hands me. I need to get into cover. He's going to hit me again. That is a very, very dangerous Tier 3 French TD. This tank's cousin, in fact. What that tank lacks, though, is any sort of speed. I believe it only goes about 20 kilometers an hour, but once it gets set up, you are in for a whirlwind if you try and face it. So I'm going to just stay hugging this vehicle, and the enemy team are going to start blind firing this position, trying to get me out. Now, I'm the one tank that's covering their side, which is making them not able to push. So what I'm going to do is back up just enough. This tank does have a little bit of gun traverse to the left and right. It's not great. It might be about 30 degrees. With the fire, we're going to take him down, but we're going to make sure we've got plenty of ammo. We're going to make sure we finish that vehicle off. There's the Pack 40 We're still up on HP, but we have to watch this Pack 40 here. Extremely dangerous tank, and the enemy tanks have... Enemy team, sorry, has just three vehicles left to R5. However, my teammate there in the S35 is low on HP, so is myself, and the Hetzer, actually, who is sitting in the woods there, is going to finish off the S35 as the Pack 40 finishes off our S35 as well, and second S35 out of three. So now it is just myself, a Matilda, and a P2640 against, well, now with the P2640 finishing off the Hetzer against myself and an S35. Now I am lit. Immediately I know it's that FCM. I'm not quite sure how he lit me, but I'm going to press right up against, actually I believe almost going underneath that tier 4 vehicle. And we're going to take a look here. Moving back, moving back. Do I have a shot? Looking for it. We're going to finish that vehicle off. Where is the pack for Looking for shell. He's going to aim for me here. I'm thinking about taking another shot, but I really don't want to get hit by that vehicle again and hit our P2640 against him. Besides the P26 on cap, we have plenty of time to cap it out. He's got a minute left. So if he goes for him, I can easily shoot that TD in the back. And the P26, I'm sure, is capable of clearing out a low health FCM. There goes the FCM. I'm going to look for him. He's going to put one shot into the P26, and we are going to finish off that very dangerous cousin, the FCM 36 pack 40. Let's take a look at the post game. All right, so another mastery badge for this tank. We got Bruiser again, Fighter, and we finished top of our team on damage, kills, and third on X, a uh, second on XP with that Panzer S35 just finishing above us. Again, not quite sure why. With half the damage that we had, maybe... I'm not entirely sure why. If if anybody knows, let me know. He doesn't look like he got any... Uh, doesn't look like he got any assist damage. Or nothing major, at least. But, very happy with this result. I'd highly recommend this tank. It's a lot of fun. You do need a separate crew for it. You're going to suffer with the gun depression. The speed trying to knock things over. And a clear brush out of, out of your way, but you're going to love the rate of fire, the alpha damage, and the just reload on this tank of, of two and a half seconds. You can't run rammer on this, and you cannot run vents. Um, so just to note that your reload is going to be solely based upon your crew. So make sure you've got brothers in arms on this thing, and that should about do it. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this triple threat UE57. If you have one of these, let me know what you think of it. If you get it, send me some of your replays. I'd love to review them. I love low tiers, and I will catch you in the next one. See ya.